Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor and if you like What's for Dinner videos, I hope that you will subscribe down below. I share one of these every week to motivate y'all to cook more for your family and to hopefully give you some new ideas to try. As always, any recipes that I mention will be linked down below. Now let's go ahead and get into this week's What's for Dinner. It is Friday and tonight for dinner, I am making sheet pan, pork chops, and potatoes. I had the other half of the bag of these red potatoes that I talked about last week. These were given to me for free and I wanted to make sure I used them up because um, I don't like letting food go to waste, even if I didn't pay for it. I don't like letting things go to waste. And sheet pan, pork chops, and potatoes are one of my favorite things to do. It's so easy, so quick, and you can make it like all different types of flavors. I love playing around with different seasonings to figure out what we like. Um, tonight we are trying something new. I'm using this garlic parmesan wing seasoning from Walmart. Um, I had one in the cabinet and I was like, man, that sounds like it would be pretty dang good on potatoes. So that's what we're trying. We're gonna put it on the potatoes and on the pork chops. I'll do probably about half of it on the potatoes and the other half on each side of the pork chops. I'm gonna cut these up into about one inch, half inch to one inch pieces, um, nice and even. And then I'll put everything on my sheet pan and bake it at 425 for about 25 minutes. And then at the very end, I think I'm gonna toss on some actual Parmesan cheese. I think I have some that's already shredded. So I'll toss some of that on. For the potatoes, I'm gonna cut them up like I said, and then I am gonna drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil. And then I will sprinkle on the half of the seasoning. And then we'll put everything on the sheet pan. We just served the pork chops and potatoes with some green beans and some applesauce. And if you plan on trying this, I would recommend doing two packets of the garlic parmesan seasoning. Um, it just needed a little bit more flavor. I feel like one packet for the potatoes and one packet for the pork would have been better. Um, I've done it with other seasoning packets before, like ranch, and split it between the two, and it's always a really strong flavor. But this one, I guess, just doesn't have like a super strong flavor. So I would recommend doing two packets. It is Saturday night and tonight for dinner we are having spaghetti and meatballs. Um, I love doing our meatballs in the air fryer. Um, I've been making the same recipe ever since I first got the air fryer. I think this is the first meatball recipe I tried in it and it's so good. I've never tried another recipe. So you guys can screenshot it if you want to. And there is the back. They are super easy to do. And I like to mix everything in my KitchenAid. It only takes like just a few seconds to get everything combined. And then you just roll them into balls and put them in the air fryer. This is going to be the first time I'm doing them in my new air fryer. So I think it will probably take a little bit less time 
but I will still do 350 and then I'll check them at about seven minutes, flip them and then see how long they need from there. So I've got two pounds of meat in here. Um, instead of doing all ground beef this time, I'm doing one pound of pork sausage and one pound of ground beef. And to that, I'm gonna add a fourth a cup of Parmesan cheese, a third a cup of panko breadcrumbs, two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, one teaspoon of parsley, one um, teaspoon of onion powder, or you could do raw onion if you wanted to, but um, I like to do onion powder instead. About a teaspoon of minced garlic, a tablespoon of Worcestershire, uh, two eggs, and some salt and pepper. And I'll just combine that in here, like I said, roll them into balls and stick them in the air fryer. Okay, here are the finished meatballs. I did end up doing them for 15 minutes total. Um, they're nice and golden and that's how we like them. So in this pan I have heated up or I'm heating up some homemade sauce uh, that I had in the freezer and I just dumped that in here and I've got it over like a medium low. I'm going to add my meatballs into there and stir it around and then just cover this and let it simmer while I boil some noodles. Um, boil some water for cooking some spaghetti noodles. Our spaghetti and meatballs. This is my plate. I topped it with a little bit more Parmesan cheese. Elijah asked me to cut his up and Lily asked me not to cut hers up. And then I made some garlic bread to go with it. This is one of those loaves of Italian bread that I pick up at Aldi whenever they're on markdown and I just throw it in the freezer. I thawed it out, sliced it up, put some of this Chef Chamois garlic butter on there. We absolutely love this stuff. Um, I recommend it all the time. It is so, so good. I want to try some of the other flavors. Um, I know there's like some sweet ones like cinnamon and like a strawberry and I think they recently released like a steakhouse one but I haven't seen that one at Sam's Club yet but this one so 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 good 
So we put that on there and then I just cooked them in the air fryer for about 10 minutes on 350 and that is what it looks like. So that is going to be our dinner for Saturday. Sunday night I made cilantro lime rice and cilantro lime chicken. So for my rice, I start off with my perfect white rice in the Instant Pot recipe, which I actually shared in a video on Thursday, so I will leave that link down below. And then once it's done and all the pressure is released, I just go in with some salt and pepper, three tablespoons of chopped up cilantro, two tablespoons of lemon juice, and two tablespoons of lime juice. And then you just stir that around and it is done. And it is really, really good. It's really similar to the cilantro lime rice at Chipotle. And then I made a can of black beans. For the black beans, I don't drain them or rinse them or anything. I just put them in a pot. And then I add about half of a can of water and some adobo seasoning. And I just let those simmer while everything else cooks. For my chicken, I recently got this Tone Cilantro Lime Seasoning Blend at Sam's Club, and I've been really wanting to try it, so I decided to season some chicken with it. It says it's great on, like, chicken, fish, um, all kinds of stuff. So I took one chicken breast and sliced it in half horizontally so that it was thin, so it'll cook more evenly and quicker. And then I just seasoned at both sides with that seasoning, and then I cooked it in my cast iron pan with a little bit of olive oil. serve this with some of that white queso dip from Sam's Club. We absolutely love it and everything in this meal was so flavorful and delicious. The only thing I wish I would have added was some pico. It is Monday and tonight for dinner we are doing fish and fries. Me and Andy will be having fish sandwiches like similar to like McDonald's fish sandwiches and the kids are just gonna have basically like fish sticks and fries. These are the ones that I bought for them. They are the wild caught wild caught crunchy fish fillets um i think it's pollock is the fish yeah pollock um really similar to just like your regular old fish sticks but they're bigger so they're wider but like the the crunchy stuff is like the usual stuff you can expect on like popcorn chicken that kind of thing so that is what i bought for them and then for me and andy i bought these wild caught beer battered cod fillets and you only get four in this bag and it was like five dollars I believe this was like three something for ten of these I'm making six of them for the kids so like three each and if they want more I will of course make more and I'm making one of these for myself and then when Andy gets home later I'll make one or two for him um straight out of the bag this smells like beer like it definitely smells like beer um and as you can see like it's definitely like that beer battered kind of breading they have the same cooking directions uh, pretty much. This does not have air fryer directions on the back. Um, this does. It says air fry to 400, eight to nine minutes. Um, this one doesn't have the directions for the air fryer, but the oven directions are basically the same. Uh, 425 for 24 to 26 minutes, flipping halfway through. That's what this one says too. So I'm gonna do them in the air fryer the same way 400 degrees about eight to nine minutes and see how they turn out I will probably flip them over halfway through through so I'll do like five minutes and then flip them over and we'll see how they go and then I'm going to make these crinkle cut fries in the air fryer as well I'm just going to cook the fish and then stick it in the oven to keep it warm while the fries cook um, that way I'm not heating up the whole house with the oven and also I just really like the way things turn out in the air fryer like it gets crispier than it does in the oven so I'd rather just like do it that way um if I had a convection oven then we wouldn't have this problem but I just have an old not convection oven because so that's basically all an air fryer is anyway is a mini convection oven so if you didn't know that that's really all this is so I'm going to do that to get these in there and then do these and we may even have some veggies I'm gonna pull out brioche buns and some cheese for my fish sandwich but yeah that's gonna be dinner for Monday okay I made a little side salad to go with my sandwich and my fries and then Elijah also had a side salad and Lily just had some veggies since she still doesn't like salad and my thoughts on the sandwich were it was really good 
Um, I really like the beer battered fish, but I actually think I really like the fish like stick, the little things better. Andy had one of each. He put two of those little fish stick ones on a sandwich with cheese and then the beer battered fish on a sandwich with cheese. And he said he really liked both, but the ones that the kids ate just by themselves, those are more similar to like the, it is the same fish and it, the, the breading is more similar to like a McDonald's fish sandwich. So if that's more of what you're going for, I would say go with the cheaper fish. Um, but both are really good and we will definitely be eating it again. On Tuesday night, I made crock pot cowboy beans. I started off the same way I started off my usual cowboy beans and that is by browning half a pound of bacon. Once the bacon was done, I removed it from the pan and set it aside for later. And then in that grease, I cooked one pound of ground beef and one small diced onion. And I seasoned that with some seasoned salt and pepper. Once the ground beef and onions were done, I drained off all the grease and then I added it to my crock pot with two cans of pork and beans, one can of kidney beans and white beans that I drained and rinsed, half a cup of ketchup, two tablespoons of brown sugar, two tablespoons of minced garlic, two tablespoons of mustard, two tablespoons of Worcestershire, and one tablespoon of sriracha along with the bacon that we cooked previously and then I stirred that all together really well and cooked it on low for six hours. After the six hours, I just stirred everything around and then added in some cheese. We did some cheddar cheese, which you could do American or whatever. And then I'll just stir that in and put the lid back on and let it melt for a few minutes. And then we just served this with some little cheddar rolls. I had some cheddar rolls in the freezer that I just brushed the Chef Chamois garlic butter on top. And we put some parsley on the cowboy beans. And we just really love cowboy beans. And they were really good with the addition of the extra beans. Usually it's just um, pork and beans when I do it on the stovetop. But we really like the kidney beans and the white beans in it as well. It is Wednesday night and tonight for dinner we are having Chinese food. I am trying a batter for the chicken that I haven't tried before. Usually I do like where you dip the chicken in like egg and then you dip it in like your flour or whatever. Um, or cornstarch. But... This time I'm making like a wet batter, so that's different for me. Um, I will leave the link down below. It's from Taste of Home. It's for a sweet and sour chicken, but I'm not making the sauce that goes with it, with it because I have a bottle of sweet and sour and I also have a bottle of orange sauce. So we can dip or toss our chicken in whichever sauce we want. Um, so here I have about a pound and a half, maybe closer to two pounds of chicken tenders that I just cut up into like little bite-sized pieces. And then in this bowl, I'm going to mix together one cup of all-purpose flour, one cup of cornstarch, two teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of baking soda, two teaspoons of sugar, and one and one-third cups of cold water. So that'll make our wet batter. And then we'll dip our chicken in the batter. Um, I'm probably also gonna season the chicken with some salt and pepper. Um, but we'll dip that in the batter and then put it in our frying oil. Um, I filled this cast iron pan up probably about halfway with some vegetable oil. And I've got it over medium heat. I'm letting it get hot so that I can cook the chicken. And then to go with this, I am going to make these teriyaki noodles um, that I got at Aldi. I've got two packages. I'm just gonna make one now and then when Andy gets home later, I'll make the other one because one will probably not be enough for all four of us. And then I've also got some crab rangoons that I'm gonna throw in the air fryer, also from Aldi, that we are going to try for the first time tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on making this batter.
I think I've shared this tip before, but I never, I always had problems with like figuring out if my oil was hot enough. I remember my dad like spitting in the oil when I was a kid. I know it sounds gross, but I mean like the heat from the oil would kill anything, right? But anyways, I, I would not suggest doing that, but I saw, I think it was on TikTok. I saw somebody stick like a wooden skewer into the oil and if it like bubbles around the wood that means your oil is hot they've also used like the end of like a wooden spoon to stick it in there and the same thing if it bubbles around the wood then it's hot so I just used a toothpick wooden toothpick and it works just the same if it bubbles around the toothpick then your oil is hot and so then I just fried this chicken um, I had to flip it over about halfway through cooking I would say that I cooked the chicken for a total of about six to seven minutes um, you're gonna want to get a meat thermometer if you aren't good at telling when the chicken is done, but I just cooked it till it was golden and cooked through and I did have to cook this in like three or four batches. This chicken turned out so good. I loved the wet batter. Like the batter on the chicken was perfect. I don't know if it's because the wet batter is that much better or that I just don't usually fry chicken like this because I absolutely hate frying things, but I managed not to burn myself this time. So that is a win. So we absolutely love this chicken, highly recommend it. And we love this sweet and sour sauce from Aldi as well. And the teriyaki noodles were pretty good. To me, they're a little bit like strong flavored. So you might not want to eat it with like the sweet and sour chicken or something that has a strong flavor as well. And we did not like the crab rangoon at all. Thursday night, the last meal on the meal plan was actually this Tuscan chicken that goes in the crock pot. But I was talking with a friend who had actually already tried the recipe and she said she didn't recommend it as a crock pot meal. So I decided to go ahead and skip it and make something else. I found a recipe for a Tuscan chicken pasta bake, um, but I didn't really follow it exactly. I will leave it down below for you guys because it was kind of my inspiration for this, but I started off by browning some chicken breast. I didn't end up using all of this chicken that you see here on the screen. Um, I only ended up using uh, a total of two breasts. This was three breasts that I had cut in half so that they were thinner. So that's why there's so many pieces. And I seasoned them on both sides with some salt, pepper, and badia complete. And I cooked them in a little bit of olive oil until they were cooked through. When the chicken was done, I removed it from the pan and I added about one tablespoon of minced garlic and about a quarter of a cup of diced sun-dried tomatoes. I cooked that for about 30 seconds and then I added one cup of chicken broth and scraped all the bits from the bottom of the pan. Then I added one and a half cups of half and half, about a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and an eighth of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. I brought that to a simmer over a medium heat. Once it was simmering, I added in this jar of sun-dried tomato pesto from Aldi and I let it simmer for two more minutes. Then I reduced the heat to low and added in about two thirds cups of Parmesan cheese. I simmered that for another two minutes. Then I turned off the heat and I added in about two cups of chopped spinach. You could leave it whole, but my family prefers it to be cut up smaller and half a jar of artichokes. I also cut those up 
and then two cups of the cooked chicken that I diced up and 16 ounces of al dente penne noodles. This is the only thing I would change about this recipe. I do not think you need 16 ounces of pasta. I would have preferred it to be more saucy, so I think next time I will just do eight ounces of pasta. And then I covered this with cheese, and since I did it in the cast iron, I could just put this directly in the oven. But if you don't have a like oven safe skillet, do it, just dump it into a casserole dish and cover it with cheese and then bake it for 25 to 30 minutes to get the cheese nice and melted. Here's what it looks like when it's done. I did actually end up broiling this for a minute as well to get that cheese nice and golden on the top. And we just served this with some garlic bread. I actually just took some brioche buns that I needed to use up and brushed on some Chef Shamie's garlic butter and stuck them in the air fryer. As I said, we liked this a lot. I will definitely make it again, but with less noodles. And that is going to be it for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on trying any of these recipes. I shared a lot of good ones this week. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!